Shooting real estate is an excellent way to make income if you're a photographer or videographer. Obviously editing and post-production is a big time consumer. So I want to show you guys how to edit a real estate photo in roughly five minutes, because the more you can edit in a shorter time to a high standard, the more money you can make. So let's get started. We've got this image here. It's not the best image, but it's pretty good to work with. Before Photoshop, we're gonna do most of our work here in Camera Raw. If you are not familiar with Camera Raw, don't be overwhelmed. There's only a few controls here we really use. The majority of what we're doing will be here in Camera Raw. So let's get started. I wanna generally brighten it up, these, especially these shady areas. I also want to remove a lot of this color and consistency here, not just the brightness, but also the color. So this is kind of warmer and greener, and then this is more cold. These areas are colder. Let's start by making the overall changes. I'm gonna add a little bit of brightness. Now we're blowing out highlights here, so I'm just gonna bring those down a little bit. Check your histogram as well. Real estate can be tricky to balance with um, blowing things out because you kind of want it as bright as possible generally but you don't want to be blowing out white so when we're finished we want to make sure nothing important is blown out clarity is one that will give you overall strong sharpness and contrast in the image and it blackens the blacks a lot so we're going to crank that anywhere between 20 and 30. It darkens up some of the shadows, so let's lift those shadows up a little bit. Overall, what will make a real estate image look really nice, generally, unless you have a, unless it's like an outdoor shot or something, is you wanna neutralize a lot of these walls and the ceilings. Neutralizing these colors will make it look really classy and smooth. So let's reduce the overall saturation. And the whole thing's looking nice and calm now, nice and neutral. But obviously we wanna turn these greens up in this case. There might be some other areas that you wanna increase color saturation if there were blues or something. But in this case, we've only got greens. So we can go into this area here called Color Mixer. And Color Mixer lets you shift the hue for different colors. It also lets you change the brightness. In our case, we are just going to use saturation. So we'll increase those greens. You'll see the greens outside. This is why Camera Raw is so powerful. This is, just gives you so much control over this. We'll come back to basic settings. Now that's looking a lot better. What I'm gonna do is target this area up here and fix some of these areas. You can choose this brush tool and it's not a paint brush. It's really a selection brush. So I'm going to paint this area or select this area. We'll start with this. Nothing's changed yet. All I've done is made the selection. Now down here, we can change with these sliders, we can change the brightness of what I've done. Now this brush is feathered, so it's, it falls off to a zero opacity. So you can reduce that. I'll bring that all the way down. Maybe I can use some exposure to bring it down as well. Let's try whites. It's probably as good as I can get it for now. The color obviously is wrong. It's a little bit cold. The flash was mismatching a lot of these lights. So let's balance that out by warming that up a little bit. You can also smooth it out a little bit by reducing clarity. That's, but you gotta be careful with clarity. If you do it on objects like the fan, you'll see that we're losing sharpness. Now I've gone back out into the main area and I'm going to go back into the brush to select this whole area. And what I wanna do is neutralize all of this horrible orange up here you wanna use saturation and just bring that saturation much like we did earlier. That's looking a lot more consistent. We can bring these shadows up. And also we want to smooth out some of this by using clarity as much as we can go before the details like the fan are lost. A lot of people wouldn't think to use noise reduction for just giving you a general smoothness of things. So you can actually increase noise reduction and it will smooth out a lot of these surfaces and you can also balance out the sharpness to make sure you don't lose sharpness. So you can get a smooth yet sharp finish. And some of these things here are features that we want to stand out more. So we can use the brush tool to select these areas that we want to make them pop out more. Now we can use texture, clarity to increase the sharpness of those. You don't want to go too far with texture, it'll look cruddy. Let's add some sharpness. 
add some noise reduction which will actually help smooth out the noise that you're creating because every time you sharpen and add texture you're going to add noise and I'll even increase the shadows a little bit. Bringing shadows up and blacks down helps keep these black blacks as well as brightening up those shadows so you can make it look much brighter without washing everything out. So I'm going to make a new selection. I'm going to be really rough here. Just paint that whole area and then I'm going to use the eraser just to kill the edge. You have to be a little bit careful here. You could make your adjustment first so you can see what you're doing. I just like to do it first. Let's decrease the exposure. Got some areas I missed here. We want to pull back some of these highlights. Let's pull these highlights down. To make it look a bit cleaner, I'm going to add a bunch of noise reduction. Might increase shadows. In other cases, I would shoot this either as a second exposure. But today we're just doing a quick example purely in camera raw, no image bracketing. So that's looking good now. We're almost ready for the final adjustments in Photoshop. One last thing, depending on the lens you use, or if you'd like the space to look bigger than it is, you can go in this area here called optics. This will correct lens distortion, or you can even compensate for a smaller lens to make the area look bigger, or you can just look that make the area look bigger in general. So the first thing I wanna do is straighten up these verticals. So I'm gonna create some guides, just roughly for reference, and Control T for transform, and hold down Alt, and then Shift once you grab the corner here. And you'll see that. So Alt and then Shift and then you'll grab the corner and it'll stay, it'll stay stuck on that horizontal axis. Me personally, I like to stretch the image slightly sideways to make it look a little bit bigger than what it is. Um, Control J to duplicate your layer. Now the layer behind, a quick and nasty way is to transform that layer and just zoom it up. The healing brush is actually a really useful tool if you haven't used it for anything other than touching up faces. It copies texture but keeps the brightness in its surrounding area the same. So it's perfect for this example. So we're going to select the source there and then we're going to simply paint that on and it looks perfect. Way better than the clone tool. We can do the same here. Now we can just use this area. It doesn't matter, these are different colors and both of these are a smooth texture. So look at that. You can also use a healing tool in this scenario. If I wanna soften up that shadow, I can choose that edge, match it there. Pretty amazing. Smooth out that one. Just to take the sharp shadows away from the flash. And here we go, the final image. Here's the before and after. I hope this helps you in your workflow and speeds up your image editing process. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.